Team Liquid didn't start as a pitch to investors. Right now, Newby dropping low flies at GG. It's done. It wasn't hatched in the mind of a marketing executive or designed to sell ads. And that's the end of Evil 2016. It didn't have any sponsors, hoodies, or a team specific hashtag. It's Team Liquid, and that's what it means to them. Over 20 years of history, some of its fans became players, and eventually, some of its players became owners. They are the only team to lift the trophy back to back to back to back, and they are the best team North America has ever produced. But the team never lost the things that had made it unique, and it held on to the people who had helped it evolve even as the entire esports landscape shifted dramatically. There's no other story like it in esports. This is the story of Team Liquid. In the year 2000, the Liquid Clan in StarCraft Brood War was one of a million user-created affiliations. For Victor Nazgul Goosens, who became leader of the Liquid Clan, it was something that could let him choose the kinds of players he'd play with. The players um, that joined Team Liquid, they were all uh, best in class, like top in the world, like great, great players, but they were also great people. There was a group of folks that had a lot of respect for each other, didn't really trash talk, uh, just kind people, and, and that was really important for us. But Liquid became more than a clan. In the early 2000s, they launched their website, TeamLiquid.net. Here, fans could discuss the latest news in both Korean and foreign StarCraft competitions on their forums. I don't even remember how old I was exactly, maybe around like 11, 12, 13. And Liquid was always the main hub in the terms of like Reddit is like a hub for discussion for people. TeamLiquid.net was that hub. And they were always like the pinnacle of like StarCraft 2 esports for me as like a, you know, as a foreigner, as they call it in the StarCraft 2 scene. And as the website approached 10 years of following StarCraft in 2010, and the second game in the series neared release, they became a sponsored team. Their first sponsorships in 2010 gave them pro team status and even allowed them to send players to Korea, where one of them made semi-finals at GSL, the deepest a foreigner had ever gone. We should be seeing a GG anytime now. Yeah, this game is done. I am so proud of Jinro. I'm sure you all are as well. We have a non-Korean in the final GG, four. GG, yo, and that is it. Jinro moves on to the round of four. He's so happy. 2012 was an important year for esports. Counter-Strike Global Offensive released, Dota 2 and League of Legends were in full swing, and the idea of an esports organization growing alongside those games made some obvious sense. But Liquid did something different. Sure, they signed a Dota 2 squad, but at a time when many premier organizations were looking to newer games, they chose to enter Super Smash Bros. Melee. That 2014 entry to Smash Bros. saw Liquid sign Ken and KDJ, which at the time was a huge commitment. But things were about to change dramatically, not only for Liquid, but for the history of esports as a whole. In 2015, the North American LCS had a problem. One of their teams was sponsored by Curse, a multimedia company that also ran fan sites and notably a voice over IP service called Curse Voice. But a partnership to promote Curse Voice with multiple other LCS teams was deemed impossible while the company fully sponsored their own team. And so, in January 2015, Team Curse merged with Liquid, taking the Liquid name, giving them a spot in the NALCS, and crucially, bringing on Steve Liquid 112 R. Hansen, a former player turned director of esports for Curse. When I reached out to Victor, that first conversation, uh, I remember I did a call with him and I was like, hey, so I'd love to chat with you about possibly merging uh, our companies together. And he's like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Unlike the realistic and analytical Nazgul, Steve was creative and idea focused. I, I feel like Steve wakes up with probably like 20 new ideas every single day. Um, and I like to take my time and filter through them. We were just very different people. You know, we make decisions differently, we process information differently, we lead differently. And so I felt like that in of itself was the fabric of building a great leadership team. 
Besides a new partnership at the top, the merger gave Liquid access to League of Legends, a fast-growing discipline that had global appeal and seemed poised to take over the esports space. But it also reinforced their investment in a game they already supported, Smash. The merger meant that two of Curse's Smash players, Chillin' Dude and Hungrybox, were now on Team Liquid. I felt good. I felt good because I knew of the size of the org, I knew their legacy in StarCraft, and I also knew that Quite simply put, they were much more remain stay in the esports scene. Hungrybox was making waves in Smash. He was one of the five gods, known for his Jigglypuff play and his competitive intensity. In 2015, Dreamhack Winter would play host to a melee tournament, and Hungrybox had a feeling it was his to win. There was just one problem. He needed Liquid's help. They were willing to work with me on a lot of things that I needed. Mainly, the main risk they took was like, listen, my buddy Lewis here, Crunch, I know it's gonna sound like a gamble, would you mind paying half his ticket and I'll meet you guys halfway to go to Sweden with me for DreamHack Winter? And they, Steve, I remember, I'll never forget, Steve said, Juan, do you need him to win? And will you guys win if he goes? And I said, yes, if he comes with me, it is our best shot at winning and I think we can do this. And he said, we'll cover his whole ticket, go win and we, we f***ing won. When Armada plays the platforms, HBox is all over him. I think that's that is it. it. Congratulations to Hungrybox making history here wow. on European soil. <laughs> we did it, dude. I mean, just like, that's, that's it's, it's trust, right? And it's that level of trust that Steve and I have had in each other that has allowed me to, I think, get to the point that I have. And that's really what matters within the team is trust and ability to make these decisions. As Melee had risen in prominence, it had earned a spot among fighting games as greatest at EVO. Previously, HBox had fallen just short in both 2014 and 2015. An EVO 2016 win would cement both his and Liquid's legacy in the eSport. Armada not giving him anything, not Nobody gets anything. Hit. He gets that, that could be it! It gives you affirmation in your own self. You look at your hands after you won, you look at the lights and sounds and you said like, man, I really dreamed about this. I really envisioned this being what happens to me. And I put all my energy and time into doing it and I finally made it. But while Hungrybox was putting his and Liquid's name on Melee trophies, the organization was expanding too. They added a CSGO team by signing the former Denial Esports roster in 2015. By 2016, it featured some of the names that would help the roster explode onto the scene, including Elige. For an organization as old as Liquid was, this signing was a milestone of sorts. Elige, who had played StarCraft and followed the eSport, didn't just see a prospective employer in Liquid, he had grown up as a fan. When I first joined Liquid, it was definitely like the team that I've always admired the most like throughout like my eSports career. Like, uh, and by career, I mean just like when I was gaming growing up because of StarCraft 2 and everything. But Liquid was finding new fans too. Part of that was Steve's willingness to enter the spotlight. We're gonna see how this looks tomorrow in the sunlight. And of course, talk about Liquid's sponsors. Sorry, my HTC phone is ringing. <laughs> well, that's, sometimes it happens. Part of it was the team's dramatic breaking point documentary, offering a candid, unfiltered, and frankly, sometimes shocking look inside the League of Legends roster, which had struggled to find consistent results. The coaching staff doesn't want to work with you. Um, they feel like it's a really unprofessional, unhealthy work environment. It was kind of interesting because it was like, even when we weren't winning, we were relevant. You know, it was like uh, you'd log on to the League of Legends Reddit and people were talking about Breaking Point. We, we had a kind of a duality with our strategy associated with maintaining relevancy within the league and, and contributing to provide content to, to fans. A massive sale of the company's controlling interest to Axiomatic in late 2016 meant Liquid had more resources than ever. But as Liquid saw growth, added new teams, and signed promising players, matters were coming to a head in both League of Legends and Dota 2. On August 12, 2017, Liquid's League of Legends team would face Phoenix One for the right to remain in the LCS. When we were in promotion relegation and we had our backs against the wall, we were playing in those matches. If we would have lost them, we would have been kicked out of the league and we would have to fight our way back in 
And it would have cost the organization millions of dollars, right? Plus whatever kind of brand damage was associated with that. And on that exact same day, August 12th, another one of their teams in one of the org's oldest disciplines was fighting for an opportunity to compete for esports' biggest prize. Mac, what is fighting this? GG! and so does Key Arena. They are going to the grand final. They've got a crack at newbie. It was this unlikely blend, a chance to find ultimate glory at exactly the same moment in time that the team needed to ward off a potentially costly and humiliating defeat. Steve was with the League of Legends team, while Nazgul was at the International's grand finals. We were playing our promotion relegation matches and they were so close. Can they pick him off and they will? The knock for Tarnock and they're all dead. It's gonna be the eighth, it's gonna be the game. And it's the match TL, back to back BO5's win of the promotion tournament. And I remember being in the room in the back and there was this feeling of relief. And then I think it might've been 30 minutes later, we won the international. <laughs> In a single day, the League of Legends roster had saved the organization millions, while the Dota 2 roster had earned millions from a record $24.7 million prize pool. I would actually say like when we won international and, and stayed in the LCS, I feel like that was the day where I would say we firmly established ourselves as an absolute tier one organization within esports. Especially if you look at the fact that StarCraft had been on the decline, right? You can argue that we were tier one in like 2010, 2011. Uh, but as far as I know, there's not really any organizations that have their roots in StarCraft that are around uh, right now at the top of esports anymore. And sure, StarCraft might have been in its twilight years, but other games were stepping up. As the score esports broke the story about the impending League of Legends franchising model previously only hinted at by Riot, teams were already lining up to apply for their spot. And 2018 saw Liquid earn a spot in the newly franchised NALCS after submitting an exhaustive application, one that famously included a biographical section about Steve's life, among other things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that was a small section, but it was, you know, a section on how we're going to create apparel. What is our roster going to be? How are we going to create content? How are we going to have a, a distinctive brand within LCS? How are we going to grow our fan base? How are we going to grow the team over the next five years? You know, it was literally five books, each book being about 30 pages, layout and design with graphics and illustrations and charts and writing. And that was our League of Legends business plan. It was a huge win for Liquid in an eSport they had committed to, and their success didn't stop there. Bringing back Doublelift, the AD carry whom Steve actually played with years prior, they became back-to-back -back NALCS champions in 2018, and then tacked on another two in 2019 to win four in a row. They are the only team to lift the trophy back to back to back to back. But Liquid wasn't done taking new risks, and this time it would take them to a whole new continent. Rainbow Six Siege hadn't exactly gotten off to a great start, but by 2018, it was clear the game was deep, competitive, and here to stay. Liquid wanted a piece of that action, but it wasn't obvious who they would sign. The League of Legends and CSGO teams were North American, the Dota 2 team was a mix from Europe and Asia, and those original Liquid Brood War players had been from the Netherlands. So Liquid decided to step into one of the most exciting regions in not just Rainbow Six, but esports as a whole, Brazil. After winning Pro League Season 7 Finals in 2018, the team became a consistent top 10 contender in the world, featuring explosive and aggressive gameplay backed up by superstars like Nesk. Push from Liquid in the back, Pengu will get taken down as Sexy Cake rushes in. And there's just still more, Candela's being shot in. Jonas cannot see a single thing as Nesk gets two more on the board here. But more than that, the Rainbow Six team started a relationship that has continued to the present day. That's what we're really excited about. I was actually just on a presentation this morning talking about our new facility that we're gonna be opening up in Brazil and how large it's going to be.
to be and how many people are going to be there and what we're going to do with that space. But even with that new relationship, North American CS fans were looking to Liquid for a win. After a tumultuous period where the roster featured Ukrainian Phenom Simple, they had gone back to basics. And in 2019, the roster was red hot. He's got the CZ and he's gone. It's all on to JW. Smoke to wait and it's done finally. Finally, Liquid get their notch on a grand slam. And Stewie is the answer it turns out after all. In their sights was the Intel Grand Slam, a million dollar prize for winning four premier tournaments organized by ESL or DreamHack Masters during a 10 event window. The only team to have done it was Astralis, the Danish powerhouse who won a total of four major titles together. It was Astralis that drew first blood in the second Grand Slam season, but Liquid fired back, taking three more against a new class of teams that were looking to become the next dominant contender. A two versus two, a Liquid have the advantage, they're trying to bring it down to the two versus one. If it's RPK that's dropped, they could be in serious trouble. That should do it! There we go! It's Team Liquid! And that's what it means to them! They've taken it in the fourth map! The favourites coming into the tournament have just unlocked the Intel Grand Slam as ESL won Cologne under the belt and a million dollars bonus! And that's something that was always really cool to me about our Grand Slam win, was that we weren't just beating random teams. We weren't just winning small events. We were winning big events against the best teams in the world, and we finished it off at Cologne, where all of the best teams in the world were there. Liquid did something improbable with this Grand Slam win, but the team's success, especially as play went online in 2020, wasn't to last. A three versus five to keep Liquid in this, and it's not happening. These two snipers have made a world of difference, and now Vinny's looking to lock it down. A minute on the clock for Naf. He runs desperately in, and Furia qualified. Still, as they stayed at the Orcs facility in the Netherlands, the team got what they needed to remain calm in a rapidly changing world. So we pretty much always had really good options. Like if we ever thought that something was necessary infrastructure wise or like a boot camp, then Liquid has gotten it. And it's only gotten better with uh, the office that we have now in the, in the Netherlands, which has made dealing with COVID and all the travel that we've had to do in the past uh, two years now, a lot more manageable. The facility is incredible. We have chefs that are full time that are providing us uh, two, three meals a day. And that just relieves a lot of the stress that I think that a lot of other teams probably have on them when they're traveling. And speaking of changing worlds, the landscape of tactical FPS games like Counter-Strike was about to shift with the release of Riot's Project A, now renamed to Valorant. Again, the new game brought on a feeding frenzy, and by now, Liquid was so big that they would clearly be angling for a spot. They signed a promising lineup featuring names like Scream, and would later add his brother Nevera and CSGO outcast Yampi. While they fell short of a Masters or Champions victory, they earned top four at two S-tier tournaments in 2021. But their European roster wasn't the end, with Riot showing that they wanted to offer more opportunities for women and non-binary people, Liquid signed a Brazilian women's roster, further deepening their connections to the country. Liquid wasn't just hopping on the hot new thing, they were trying to rethink old ones too, signing top WoW guild Limit. Wait, chill, 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 chill. Let's go! What the limit uh, now, liquid um, uh, folks do? I mean, that is mastery at it at its finest. Um, so that actually fits perfectly. And then together with like the fantasy world approach uh, of MMOs, like that is going to be a massive. Uh, massive initiative for us. And while their League of Legends roster had fallen short of international success, the lineup now assembled for 2022 included Bjergsen, TSM's perennial superstar, now playing mid for Liquid. Sometimes when I'm trying to look up our, after we play a match and I'm trying to like watch the game on YouTube, I'll write like, oh, TSM versus 100 Thieves. And then I'm like, where's the game? We can't find the game, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm on Team Liquid now. The new lineup attracted some discussion given that they play in a North American league, but residency rules have allowed them to field what is essentially an international roster. But for Liquid, their international identity is a byproduct of a strategy that seeks to achieve international success. You owe it to the other players that are on that roster. You owe it to your fans who you have said winning is important to build the best absolute roster that you possibly can. 
given whatever rules or constraints there are on the league. And so that's what we do. Every year we approach the off season with a massive spreadsheet of all the potential players that are available around the world. And we determine what is the right mix in order to build a roster to win, to do well at Worlds, to represent North America at Worlds. But there's one more thing to discuss about Liquid. In 2021, they extended an offer to some of their longest tenured players to become part owners of the team. I think Steve was willing to give myself and of course the other couple of athletes that were able to have the opportunity. He really wanted to showcase the opportunity of, for growth of players within the org, but he also wanted us to be, I think, bigger parts because he knew of our experience and he knew the input that we had was kind of invaluable to the scenes in which we represent. Team Liquid didn't start as a pitch to investors or a logo in a marketing deck. Sure, in 2022, it's a business, and it certainly deals with those things now. But there's something about knowing that the team you cheer for is run by people who understand the feeling when you take over a game. The feeling when you achieve something impossible. They started off chasing those feelings too. And that's why being a Liquid fan feels different. Because whether you're one of the five gods or a fan cheering your heart out, you get back what you put in. And that's what Liquid is about. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, then hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.